Hello there, welcome back into Blood Bowl 3 Season Finals. It's me, Adam Savage, here, joined by the almighty Jimmy Fantastic and Andy Davo here as well with us. Uh, it's great to have you here, Andy. Hey, we watched your last match unfold. It was... It was what it was, my friend. I mean, I'd love to hear from you, actually, because we, we all, everyone here on the broadcast, myself, Jimmy, everyone watching at home as well, was thrilled. We were totally enthralled, actually, by it all. Um, what a matchup against Art. And uh, tell us how it was actually playing in uh, your first round then, the winner's bracket. Oh, I was great. Um, I think the, the first half went really well for me. I thought they controlled the Rattoga really well. It didn't really get a lot of hits. Uh, and I was delighted to be able to, to pop it in on turn eight. Then uh, his one turn fails. Uh, and at that point, yeah, it's it's going about as well as it goes. Um, I think <laughs> the other thing that stood out in the first half was the choice whether or not to go and foul the gutter runner, uh, because if you can kill the gutter runner, suddenly that game is a totally different um, matchup. And I got pretty punished in fact. Instead of killing the gutter runner, I got sent off. So that took me down to eleven. Then in the second half, um, I expected the Dakar and he ran away and hid quite nicely. Uh, we got some shots. I got some shots on the ball. The, uh, the, the, the thing that probably got me the most was the failed leap to try and sack the gutter runner. There was the choice, push in and actually go for it or stay back and try and block the Dakar. And I felt that the, the best option against the gutter runner that can just do whatever it wants is go for it. Um, I wish I hadn't spent the second reroll uh, blocking down a blitzer, but if I'd left that blitzer up, he was gonna be able to sweep around that side and it was, I was toast. So I felt like I had to take that block and then go for it. Nothing really worked in that, in that turn. Uh, what, what did you guys think? Jimmy, what, what were your thoughts? Yeah, it was a, I, th I thought it was a great spot, the jump, to get the hit on the ball. I thought it was a great spot, the, the three plus two plus to hit the ball. Um, but yeah, that, using the reroll, like you want to put the reroll in, don't you? So, so you really want to put the reroll in if you make that play, so. Um, and I mean, what lost the game for you was it was just brutal, wasn't it? Like in the, <laughs> it was like the 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 um, the send off, and then the GFI failed <laughs> yeah. cars, and then the and of you and of course just losing the toss as well. So it was just like all three things were just horrendous, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. It, it seemed like you had a, a yeah. From from our point of view, that the the first half was was, was strong. You seemed very much kind of you, know, you had you kind of everything that was thrown at you by art. You you dealt with, and, you, and obviously you've got the the touchdown just the, just the half of things. But yeah, as as Jimmy said, it was that it was that, literally that one or two turns beginning of the second half. It was just like the, the the world, the kitchen sink was being chucked at you, my friend. And you were just left there having to kind of pick up the pieces. And uh, we, I mean, we, there was there was a ray of hope when the Rat Ogre was taken out there, and we thought, okay, this is this is this is this is looking good for you again. But I guess from your point of view, I mean, I mean, art, art as well. Would you would you would you go as far as saying that you kind of expected the way that he was going to to, to work the underworld and against you there, and and, and how things played out, uh, courtesy of uh, what he's like as a player? Yeah, absolutely. I, I thought that the second half was going to be played. Exactly as it was going to be played, um, not because it's art, but because that's how you play with Underworld on offense. You run away and hide, and then try and score. Because if you try and stay face to face, what happens is you just get punched, and you can't you can't afford the attrition, so you've got to run backwards. Uh, the, the taking the Rattoga out was great. It was a little bit too late. The, the combination, I suppose, of the thrower getting sent off on the Avicious Ref, the Blitzer killing itself on the go for it to hit something. Yeah, maybe you don't make that go for it. I'm sure everyone's thinking right now you definitely don't make that go for it but uh, in most worlds that's fine and even when it falls over it's still fine so it was pretty rough to get kicked out um oh well oh well it, it happens i thought i played all right well, look look we're all we're all glass half full kind of guys okay we, 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 we you're still in the competition here andy you're still in the yeah. competition you've got a next match up against uh plotners coming your way in the lower bracket um how do you, how, how are you feeling about that? How 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 do you how are you how are you going to prepare for that? And is it something that you are confident that you'll kind of get through and uh, progress in the the latter part of this competition? Yeah, I, I think I'm I'm not going to be nervous about playing that game. In fact, I've just played that matchup uh, in round three, so it's it's basically the same roster. In fact, he's got a block runner, not a mighty blow blitzer, so it, it's the same. Um, we managed to beat dwarves in the last match. Orcs dwarves is normally okay. But there's the mighty blow element, so sometimes they can just destroy you. We'll see. I think I'm okay. Yeah, I think think strong favourite for that. I think that's a pretty good match for you. 
I think you'd have been favourite versus Coltrick as well, honestly, I think. Whereas if Art had lost and had to face Dwarves in the second game, he'd have been he'd have been on the brink, wouldn't he, for sure. <laughs> I mean, you're still on the brink, like, to be fair. <laughs> it's tough now, isn't it, fighting through the loser's bracket, but great, great to get the second chance. Look, we, you know, and we say as well here, you, know, you obviously you were just competing, and you join us here on the team. You're about to compete again, and uh, no doubt join us back on the team. And you are, I mean, you're, you're working hard, my friend. And we and we respect it, and we love you for it. We love you for it. Um, the rest, I mean, obviously this, this competition as well. We were, we've been talking, Jimmy and myself, about the kind of like you know, what else has been happening across the course of the competition. Hopefully, we can see the bracket again in a second here to remind ourselves exactly how things currently look. Uh, thus far, but um, I'm sure you've seen some of the scores here, Andy, as well. Um, and I'll ask both of you, the kind of like, you know, what's been the kind of like the the big ones for you? I mean, we can see our winners bracket there. That's officially uh, what's happening in round two there. Um, some big, some big uh, head to heads. Um, and what, what what is the first one that jumps out for you? Oh, oh look, Dion Lord versus Strider. Funnily enough, uh, Lizard Man Mirror, Dion Lord. Uh, really famous in tabletop for orcs and strider i think mostly with lizards uh it does great on fumble with them as well so yeah that, funnily enough i think that is the best match of the uh second round well now that we've talked about them andy i'm gonna, I'm gonna let you kind of segue into talking about them specifically here as we look at their uh their rosters in a second here as well uh we of course have uh that big match which is going to be coming away on the broadcast very very soon here uh Diomlo versus strider um which of the two players would you say andy uh, are ones that you know who should we really be kind of like kind of keeping tabs on here? Who do you think is going to go the distance uh, and qualify through to? I believe, if I'm not mistaken, at the end of this matchup goes through to next next weekend. Goes through to the last top six in this competition. Yeah. Um, so going down the winners bracket, uh, Hero and Anarian. Uh, that's a very nice matchup for Anarian. It's Dwarves versus Black Orcs. I, I think that, that's okay. Um, Moving Slayer and Diomed. That, that could go either way. I think they're, they're both very strong players. Strider and DM Lord, are, they are both incredibly uh, good on tabletop. And I think that's a Lizard Man mirror. Jimmy, Jimmy, is that right? Is it Lizard Mirror? Correct, yeah. yeah so, so who knows? They're both incredible players. Possibly Strider because he plays a little bit more Lizards, I think, but they're very strong. Um, so that would. And then Call Troop versus Art. you probably say Art there. And then it then takes it into you know, Lizards in Underworld which I think Underworld are okay there. So you, you've got to say that Art's pretty, pretty favourite, I think, to get to the winner's bracket final now from, from <laughs> this. And yeah, that's my, my pick. He probably makes it all the way through. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Art's looking looking very strong. I think he'll be very happy. Elliot and Cruz both both got eliminated. Um, but funny enough, my other pick was Strider for the final. And uh, this is actually quite an easy quite an easy thing to look at. The the two teams they are identical. It's not just a lizard man mirror. It's they're identical teams. They're both twelve players. Uh, they've both gone for the chameleon skink over the reroll, and uh, they've both gone the full six block. The uh, Basically, the NAF standard, right? The, uh, the the six block lizard men. So yeah, uh, that, that's it. It's com two completely standard lizard men rosters. I mean, you can see here as well. I mean, he's, he's not wrong. I mean, Jimmy. I mean, he says there the two two you know two lizard men rosters going head to head here, Andy. Um, what's going to be the difference maker here? The the the, the fact that that is going to separate them, be them so similar. What will be the one thing that needs to be done here or has to be done, you think, in order to kind of well, separate the, the winner from the loser of this next match? So from a mechanical point of view, it's going to come down to how many Sauruses can ha hit each other's Sau yeah, Saurus. So you want to be receiving first in my view here, so you, you get the extra three hits. You want to be trying to set up 2v1s and 3v1s on Saurus so they can't run away and then you can punish them. If you can do those things, you'll have a great time. If you're, or you could just be really unlucky because it's such a straight mirror match. It, it could just go, oh, someone's killed a Saurus. Oh dear, that, that, that is enough to win you the game potentially. Yeah, right. yeah, oh, yeah like random, uh, random removals are like, you know, just a huge factor in this. And, uh, and it, you know, maybe the familiarity of uh, Strider, but uh, we're live now, so we can yep, we yep, we go to it. We certainly are. Um, Andy, thanks for joining us very briefly here. We're going to see you again later on. Um, thanks for digesting what just happened in your match against Art. And we're going to see you after your lo lower bracket round where you will beat Plotinus. 
in calling it. 20 minutes or so, yes. Yeah, yeah, so good luck with that, my friend. We'll definitely catch up with you again later on, though. For now, though, uh, myself and Jimmy are going to jump back into uh, our next matchup here on the official broadcast of uh, our Blood Bowl 3 season finals. Uh, Strider takes on uh, Dion Lord, and we're going to see exactly who is going to be the victor here. Let us know in the chat here as well who you think is going to be going through uh, after this uh, this game here. We'd love to hear from you. There should be a poll at some stage where you can vote on and uh, you can let us know exactly how you feel about it. Very soon, we're going to head on into the action and get ourselves ready. Here we go. We jump into some more uh, here across this uh, fantastic Super Saturday. Right, Jimmy? Yeah, glorious. And uh, they have to use the, the feature. This is a great feature introduced in Blood Bowl 3. Uh, you can press a button to make one side red and one side blue because they both have taken oh. the exact same color. So this would be <laughs> unwatchable without the red and blue. So great, great to have that functionality in for this one. Um, uh, God bless. Like God bless colors. God bless red and yeah. blue. It's great. It's a great, great, great feature, honestly. Uh, so yeah, it looks like Strider's won the toss here, and uh, you know that gives him gives him obviously the advantage in that he can just make a you know more hits, more more chance of removals. Um, yeah, I think everybody would choose to receive in this situation. Also, crucially, if it goes to overtime, um, well, so if he gets one nil up in overtime, you'd rather be on defense, I think, in the second half. So you've got more chance of keeping your rerolls, whereas you know you have to use rerolls on offense uh, sometimes more more than you have to use rerolls on defense. Oh my God, this what a crazy scatter here! <laughs> <laughs> that was absolutely crazy, but uh, somehow it wasn't a touchback, and it's a very close kick. So you know we're gonna have to see some good turn ordering from Strider. Keep the safe moves first, and and cover any potential disaster. Yeah, absolutely right. I think, um, yeah, what, what interesting is we talk about the, the, the lizard men versus lizard men, kind of the mirror side of this and how they're, you yeah, know, they're not too dissimilar, if not exactly the same as one another. But if I'm not mistaken, 11 lizard men entered the, the, the kind of play in stages and almost every single team had exactly the same setup, the same amount of players and everything. Uh, yes, the ones that qualified did. Yeah, there, there, were, yeah. there were eleven people, and, and uh, there were some people who uh, C Bros had a sneaky git, uh, skink. Um, somebody bright had three guards and three blocks. Uh, Necronome had a guard on his Croxagore, things like this. So, so we're all a few little wrinkles, and they're all fine mm. because lizards are a strong team. But uh, you know, tabletop, it's pretty well established that all block is the play. And and then further to that, you you now have the option of. Do you go with uh, 11 players and a third reroll, or do you go with um, the Chameleon Skink as the 12th player? And yeah, that, that one I thought was a lot more up for debate. But yeah, that debate was crushed by Smilzo, Strider, and Dion Lord all taking the Chameleon Skink and only two rerolls. It's a really tough call to make, honest. Oh my god, here we go. Instant KO. Will he apple it? Saw us wow. on turn one. KO, he does not apple it. Wow. So I wonder if Dion Lord's thinking about overtime with, with that. With that, you know, very early he'd be thinking about overtime, right? Turn one. But a turn one Crocs KO is like some of the best value you can possibly get for your apothecary. Because that's, you know, maybe he doesn't, maybe Dion Lord stops the stops the drive here. He's got a lot more chance with an extra source to stop on the drive. And if he does stop the drive, then uh, there's only one chance to get this guy back. So, you know, 50-50, this guy could be out for 16 turns. So that was a really amazing opportunity to use the Apothecary. Fails the pickup, and there's the bobble box. And it might come out in front, it doesn't, but we can get a scatter here. So instant, instant kind of disaster for both parties here. Um, <laughs> the, the, the short kick has meant that maybe, uh, maybe John Lord can snaffle the ball away. Uh, but then, similarly, the early KO instantly puts the pressure on Dion Lord trying to defend with less less bigger boys. Wow, that was an action-packed turn one. That was pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we called for it, Jimmy. We want to see the action, and we're getting exactly what we ordered. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There were all those failed attempts to get the ball, and uh, this is going to be a huge scatter here. Yep, he does get the power. I think he'll follow as well to put the heat on the skink. Doesn't scatter it, so he's going for the he's going for the five plus pick. I mean, surely he's going for the five plus pickup. Surely, I, I would have scattered it personally. I, maybe, maybe, so maybe, maybe I was being greedy and stupid then. Yeah, he's just gonna he's just gonna swarm, just gonna swarm with tackle zones and stuff. That, that's safer. But 
I guess the, the idea is like maybe the scatters would have favoured uh, Strider more. But the thing is, if they do, Strider can just scatter it next turn anyway. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's like the tabletop, uh, you know, mentality of just not scattering. Maybe, maybe that I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not that much of a tabletop player. Mm -hmm. uh, the Omlord and Strider both both tabletop, but Strider more lizards. Uh, I think the Omlord's more orcs than lizards, and uh, Strider plays lizards a hell of a lot. He won the Super League on Fumble, which is uh, you know like a NAF style exactly like this. Um, he had lizard men, so. He's got the he just goes for the five plus pickup, makes it. Oh my god! Oh my god! Five that's, plus pickup, come on! Wow, <laughs> wow, that's not what I would have done. Flip me, that was amazing. Ball, ballsy move, but pays off completely. And now he's got the ball in a cage. Incredible! I mean, absolutely incredible. Getting that five plus. Wow. But for a lot of a lot of the viewers who I'm sure are kind of like getting to grips, you know, with the different races in the game, and Lizardmen obviously come up regularly suggesting that they're one of the strongest that there are what what, what were the fundamentals that, that that define them as being one of those kind of stronger races what is it about kind of about them that you that you think is the biggest factor when it comes to why they're chosen so so regularly now in blood bowl three well so n number one it has to be the strength right it's the, it's strength and speed it, it's two things you can't you can't you can't have one without the other because black orcs are not not anywhere near on the same level they, they've got the strength right they've got these seven strength four plus players you've got six strength four players with block in in naf format they're actually not so strong not out of naf format because you you basically have to score s touchdowns on your saurus to get levels on them mm. and then and it takes a long time and you, your start hasn't got as many re-rolls and they're there's, they're a lot more awkward in like league situations or ladder situations, a lot more awkward. But in NAF style, they're still absolute god tier. They have these six block players that are strength four and a, and a strength five player as well. So they have the seven strong guys. And then the, the four ones that aren't strength four, okay, they're movement two, but they're stunty. They can go anywhere and they're so fast. Saurus are unbelievably fast. Like so, the Saurus are the big guys. They're, they're not only are they strength four, they're, they're all movement six. All of the strong guys are movement six, which is unbelievably fast for a strength four guy and then the the skinks are movement eight so and, the, and can dodge through tackle zone so like it's just it's just so fast and so strong it's it's yeah. unbelievable they're, they're unbelievably powerful but uh yeah funnily enough in in ladder they're nowhere near as powerful and yeah there's the miss next game cycle as well uh you know they, they've got you've they've got the apple the apple uh, apothecary is not as good as it used to be anymore so uh, you end up with more players in this next game, and if you know if you're starting a match with only five Saurus, that's a lot worse than starting with six. And so yeah, they're, they're, it's fraught with difficulties in the ladder, but NAF just solves like you know re resurrection and uh, starting with allocated skills completely solves all of their problems, and they are absolute, absolute. I mean, th they would be the best if it wasn't for Underworld. I think that's fair to say. <laughs> And, and what's particularly crazy about them is they're so strong and like they're so unbelievable that even their bad matchups aren't that bad, right? They, they do have a bad matchup versus <laughs> Underworld, and and they kind of have a bit of a bad matchup versus Elves in general, but they can quite easily oh they can quite easily win those matchups, you know, just by virtue of how powerful they are. Yeah. Well, you've sold me on why they're so good. Thank you for that. I now understand why. <laughs> good. Thank you. <laughs> um, do you know what they might do here? Oh, I, no, he's not going to do it. <laughs> there's, a, there's a cool way he could get rid of a Saurus here, but then I thought about it, and he's just definitely not. He's just going to. He's just going to fight. He's just going to try and stabilize. Um, it, it, I, I wonder now if he's if he's regretting not appoing that right because if if he had used his apple, he'd have if he'd have been standing up a uh, he'd have been standing up a Saurus in the middle of the field right now. And he's he's got one stunned, and he's got one off the pitch. So he's a, he's very light in the Saurus. I wonder if he'll just try and you know scoot around if he can to punch it in early. Interesting. Yeah, already very congested here on the left left hand side of the field. I mean, you talked you talked about tabletop earlier on as well here. Uh, you know the the experience and and, and you know how that adds so much to when it comes to like the, you know a digital version like this is. Um, what do you what do you think it is? What, what kind of like what, what gives you the edge with tabletop that you kind of maybe do, don't necessarily find in a, in in something like this? Well, anything so, specific, do you think? 
Yeah, so specifically, it, it's just the style of play, right? Um, the, when you look at Blood Bowl 2 and Blood Bowl 3, the vast majority of, of games were taking place on the ladder or in like a, a scheduled league where like you, you start off with a rookie team and, and they score touchdowns and stuff to get better and then your players slowly advance and they get to quite high TV. In these games, because it's like a set TV and there's no progression aspect, it, it's a lot more on the result of the games and it there's also like there's a there's a hyper focus on a, a certain tv range and t certain skill usages and and you know also risking your players for the victory uh a lot of times in ladder it's or, or in a league it's not worth for example risking your witch elf to win a game but uh in this you absolutely you don't care you just throw them away doesn't matter who dies just win the game it's the only thing that matters and and if you know the online only people like artemis you know, it's still Blood Bowl, right? It's still Blood mm -hmm. Bowl. All the fundamentals are the same. Uh, you know, all the strategy is the same to a point. Uh, like, just the same as low TV games. But then when you get to the actual specifics, guys like Strider, who played loads of tabletops, um, you know, they've just seen more of this kind of, more of this basically kind of Blood Bowl. But it's still Blood Bowl, you know, like the, the, the good players are still the good players. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We might definitely see a surfed Saurus now. I mean, we should do. We should absolutely see a surfed Saurus. If uh, this was why, maybe, this was maybe why Diomlo should have gone for it last turn because this turn, uh, this Saurus is definitely going into the crowd. Um, well, not definitely, but very, very likely. Strider will be very sad if he doesn't, <laughs> and he can he can move the other players up here to try and hold. So yeah, he's, st he's still. He's still in a good spot, Strider, even though even though he's lost the ball. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good place to be. You're still in a good place, even though you don't have the ball right now. Uh, it's good for him. Yeah. Yeah, he's 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 in a much better board position apart from having lost the ball on his drive. <laughs> Sounds a stupid thing to say, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this this is you know down two Saurus very shortly, Dion Lord. Yep, gets the push. Is it permanent? I guess he's thinking of the follow. Uh, the follow can't be good. But at least use the time to, you know, think about it. Ah, uh, the crowd have gone literally wild. Um, you know, I, I mean, to, to, to remind you guys at home as well about the uh, how Strider and uh, Dion Lord got to this position today. Obviously, we saw Galencio uh, and Dion Lord play earlier on today, a 1-0 victory for Dion Lord. But uh, Strider, one of the first games, I think, in winner's bracket round one against uh, um, Kian Dare uh, with a 2-0 uh, victory there. Was that was that expected? Obviously, you know, Kian Dare rocks the Imperial Nobility. Would you, would you have expected that to have been the outcome considering, you know, race versus race, lizard men obviously as strong as, as you mentioned earlier? Yeah, yeah. I don't think it was surprising the result, but the manner in which it happened was was pretty brutal. Honestly, for Kiander, he just he rolled so many skulls. Pretty much everything he tried failed, and it was it was really really rough game of the dice. And you know, it was the kind of game where he kind of really needed good dice to win. So, mm. <laughs> given the dice, it wasn't a surprise at all. But the the, the manner of it was, uh, yeah, probably is a, a bit a bit tragic for Kiander. But yeah, the result. Not, not unexpected, honestly. Uh, yeah. Even with the extra skills uh, and ability, are like they're not. A, the problem with an ability is they're not a good team. So even though yeah. they got the extra skills, it doesn't fundamentally change their, you know, their base players. Um, whereas lizard men are a, are basically a completely broken team to <laughs> to to start with, and then they get to add block to everybody. So yeah. <laughs> sorry, Dimmy. Yeah, sorry, Dimmy. Uh, as much as Dimmy thinks thinks Imperial and Ability are the best team, <laughs> they are statistically amongst the worst. <laughs> but they do get they do get the uh, they you know it was a great package and, and it convinced Kiander to use them, it convinced Christopher to use them. Artemis thought about using them, um, and there's another really bad team, All World Alliance. And Elliot and I both considered All World Alliance briefly because it's you know the the, the package can make a huge difference, but you know. Even with a package, like, can you make up for the fact of just how strong lizards are? Maybe not. They're so good. They're it's they, they're just in a weird spot. The, the the weird thing is, you know, having the bad matchup versus Underworld because, mm -hmm. you know, like they're the best team in the the second best team in the game, but they have a poor matchup versus the best team in the game. 
which which does put them in like a weird spot. Right? Yeah, we suggest we might have ourselves a uh, an underworld versus lizard men grand final. Could be a thing. That's actually what I predicted. Um, <laughs> though I predicted Is Elliot it? coming through the winners bracket and Strider coming through the losers bracket. So that could be it. Could be the same final, but in reverse, right? It, it could be. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. how it could shake out. And you know, Crucifer Eliod later on today is is a, an enormous matchup in the lower bracket of all things. Yeah, outrageous. That could have easily been the final. That could have absolutely easily been the grand final. You know, uh, there's there's a lot of games that could as well, right? People are close, but you know, I think we all it, on Twitch because we've seen so much of Eliod play. You know, we re, we all kind of rate Eliod the familiarity maybe. Makes us. I mean, I think he's great as well, right? He's won. He's won two majors on Fumble. He, he, he qualified more than anybody for the Blood Bowl two uh, finals. He qualified with every race. Like he, he's he really is a great player. But you know, I'm sure if somebody follows Naf style more, they'll maybe he's like you know like Strider more. So so you know, there's a certain amount of bias um, in in picking favorites and stuff. So you know. Just, just because uh, we all love Crucifer and Elliot, it doesn't mean they're necessarily uh, the best two players. But I think a lot of it would put, you know, Cruz has just dominated Blood Bowl too. So, Re really cool that game. That. Fancy the lizards. Yeah, this is funny, right? The, the team that's taken the two KOs are the team that has stolen the ball on the opposing team's drive. So, it it's it's weird that it's it's kind of. The game's in a, in a weird spot. The blue lizard's getting to tee off. Does that... Oh, so he's, is he hitting, yeah, he's hitting with a skink. So he hits with a skink, and that frees up the block Saurus to blitz the ball. Only on two dice. Gets the both down. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Now he hasn't lost the ball on his drive, <laughs> and he's made two KOs, so... <laughs> yeah, this is switching a little bit now, switching back, switching back to Strider. You can see a lot of the uh, a lot of players utilising Chunter's, Chunter's column. Uh, <laughs> right, right, yeah. And the ball remains in play, you know, you know it's uh, right, right on the precipice there. Yeah, yeah, like he, he rolled the both downs, right? If if this had been a power it, and the way it scattered, it would have gone in the crowd. And he had two, he had two skinks ready to react to wherever it went. But uh, as it happened, the the block, ultimate value, the one dice block there, amazing. You you have to make that one dice block. As mm. as I said before, the the mighty blow on the Crocs used to make these kind of moves a lot scarier. Now that now they're automatic because you you basically can't lose. Um, so yeah, really, really scary for Dion Lord now. He's got these two stuns. He's got two players off the pitch. Two players are nowhere near. It's it's a nightmare. Even though he got the ball, I wonder if he should have maybe like scooted for, tried to scoot forward earlier and stronger. But you know, the, the problem with that is, you know, Strider's trying to stop you, and he's pretty good at blood ball. <laughs> he's he's pretty good. He's he's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. But maybe that was maybe that was that was, was a plan because aggression, you know, it, it's it's a huge, a huge in this particular game. It's a huge difference, and you can see right now a lot of a lot of the of, of Dion Lord's players are just incapable of actioning anything, which obviously makes it even harder. Whilst Strider's undoubtedly already plotting his next move, um, <laughs> it's I mean, he, but this is again this might come into the fact that you know Strider is a, is so famous on the likes of tabletop, and that it, this experience it, it's it's so key. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, he, he has like, he has positioned his players like totally his three are sealing off these three. And he just has to trade one on one, right? Like he's trading here two on one, but he only has to trade one on one because there's two. Oh my God, he's not re rolling that. Wow. Wow. I, I, hmm. <laughs> I think Dion Lord in that very quick non re roll. Time frame has has given up this half, and he's just going to save his two rerolls for the one turn attempt. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. Not rerolling that then. I think he must just be giving up this half now, and he's just going to try and score the one turn. That's pretty much the only thing that makes sense. Not rerolling that because you know this is this is really terrible. <laughs> <laughs> this is really terrible right now. Wow. Wow. Bing. 
He's made the decision early on, only turn five. Yeah. To go yeah. and quits. I mean. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, mm. I think I think he has to be calling it quits by by not re-rolling that, and you know he hasn't used his apple, so like that wrote off the drive a bit anyway, right? The turn one KO, you're almost writing off the drive by not K K KOing by not appoing the KO, you're almost writing off the drive, and then with that non-reroll he, again, he's almost writing off the drive, which is funny because Drive has only got one reroll left. But I think, yeah, maybe he just thinks, oh dear. Oh gosh. Oh dear. Yeah, he's in a bad spot. Yeah, like that, that's what I mean, hold on. It is, it is a completely reasonable assessment to make. He is, he's in a bad spot. And it's, you know, he, I guess he just thought it's not getting better, right? Like everything's, everything's paired off one on one. How is he going to get into this game? You know, even if he, even if he rolled a power there and picked up the ball and ran down the field. Yeah. Pretty rough. He might he um, might lie down and not stand his players up at this point. <laughs> the Elliot special. Elliot <laughs> Elliot loves to just lie down and not stand his players up. Um, well, l lucky lucky for either one of these teams. Whoever, whoever loses this, by the way, one of, oh yeah, we'll go down to obviously to the lower bracket uh, round uh, two, uh, facing off against what looks like either Crystal Hunter or Smiles. And a Smiles, of course, also re represents. There's a man. So we've got ourselves. It could be mirror after mirror, after mirror after mirror. Fantastic. Yeah, hopefully, fantastic. hopefully there's a more interesting. <laughs> let's let's more flipping interesting hope so, mate. For, uh... Let's flipping hope so. <laughs> uh, but I'll be, I mean, interesting regardless. I mean, that, that's what that's one thing about this competition that I love as well. The fact that the lower bracket, as well as the winners bracket, has got such delicious looking lineups for us as well already. I, I love the fact yeah. that's that's already happening in this. Yeah, and it, it, like it's it's funny, isn't it? Because in many ways, like the losers bracket is more interesting, just because now their tournament lives are on the line, aren't they? You know, like uh, in this one, okay, Dion Lord might might you know might be in a bad spot. Uh, ultimately, he's not going to be that concerned, is he? Because at least he knows he'll get a second chance. Whereas, exactly. you know, Andy now is fighting for his life, isn't he? If he if he if he hasn't started yet, or whenever he starts, that's it. You know, everything's on the line every match. Whereas these guys, at least they've got that. That probably helped them mentally as well, right? Knowing that they've got that, yeah. that safety net in a way. Well, and let's not forget for you guys at home as well. The winner of this matchup will qualify to next weekend's grand finals. So that is that is a done deal. One of the six uh, that will be going through to uh, to next weekend. What a great what a great opportunity as well. Like, I'm, I'm really excited for everybody to see at home. Is you know myself, uh, you, uh, Andy, will be in a studio next weekend, mate. Yeah, that's that's amazing, isn't How it? How cool is that? It's really cool. Holy moly! They showed us, they showed us a picture of it, didn't they? And it looks amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna insist that what what, what, should, what should we insist they have in the studio for us? Like we got insist we got some systems that like a, like a an 80 slash 90s themed I don't know like basement I don't know Just every cool thing from that era like a Ghostbusters I want to go like a Ghostbusters firehouse I want every I mean I'm I mean, my, my <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know sword, if you if you remember that hero quest advert. <laughs> yeah, broad. Yeah, downright a broadsword. <laughs> oh my god, I'd love that. Right, chat. Let us know what do we need to have at our really random. It's never going to happen, my dear. But I'm just saying <laughs> hypothetically, in our really cool '90s themed like gaming space. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, obviously, tabletop blood bowl. That's a, that's a given. That has to be there. Um, <laughs> What else? I mean, maybe, yeah. uh, maybe um, what, was, what was that little thing that used to be have, come in like a little plastic? Was it Mighty Max? Remember that? Mighty Max? Remember those? I, I don't remember that. Monster in my pocket cards? Remember those? Oh my, there's loads of things. <laughs> Some great stuff. Good times. <laughs> Tom Cruise in his Top Gun flight suit. <laughs> <laughs> that is what. That is an absolute must. I don't know how we can arrange that, but. <laughs> Castles and catapults. Yeah, it's definitely a, it's definitely a Wayne's World basement vibe. That that is a given. That's a given. Yeah, well, we, we could that. see. We I could see that. a surf here. Oh no, we haven't. Of course, of course. The Lord has decided to have rubbish dice this game. Not not a great choice to have rubbish dice. <laughs> um, if he just pushed him there, he could have pushed him again, pushed him, and, and got rid of him, and that could have been a big swing. But. Uh... Rough doesn't make this three. Oh, so I guess the follow-up hit. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, yeah, okay. I like this. He gets the two D into the three D. 
gets this skink down and then gets to smash with the procs as well so you know just try and try and chip somebody here on defense is all, is all the unlord can do now right he's, he's given gave up the ghost a couple of turns ago but he, if he can smash with his crocs ago maybe get a bit of luck could turn it around and mobile, and mobile definitely no mobile phones that that's for sure isn't it certainly the good old days before smartphones Saved by the Bell, yeah. <laughs> why is Zach from Saved by the Bell? Why, why, can't we get Can't we get a Tiffany Amber Thiessen? <laughs> yeah, just specifically Zach, just leaning against some kind of locker, saying something smarmy. <laughs> there's definitely, there's definitely, uh, yeah. I, I like, I like we're going on this tangent now. I like thinking about like TV <laughs> programs, and there was some mad. I mean, we're going into a real thing, but there was some mad. I think cartoons of that era were so good as well so yeah. good thundercats he-man turtles man it, it never ends yeah they were really good maybe it's because we were little but uh it does seem like they were a lot better then for sure yeah they really were good times <laughs> girls are loud as studio guests yeah yeah <laughs> that would be the dream <laughs> 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 Screwball Scramble, I had that. That was a great game. The little ball bearing, do you remember that, Jimmy? Yeah, I remember that one, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was a that was a wonderful time. <laughs> Screwball Scramble. Of a game. Oh yeah, Dream Spice Girls, yeah. Spice Girls are more that era than uh, Girls Allowed, aren't they, actually? Yeah, get the <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when they released the they released the board game? I mean I use the term board game very lightly here. Do you remember Dream Phone? Do you remember that being a thing? I don't remember that, no. It was the most cringe thing you've ever seen in your entire life. <laughs> where you would, you would basically dial numbers and try and find the guy of your dreams. <laughs> and, it, and then it would have this kind of really cheesy, like, I'm sorry, I'm not the guy. And it, it, would, it, was, <laughs> uh, mate, it was appalling. I don't know what that was. 90s were, were wild times. <laughs> yep. We have ourselves a touchdown, baby. The first one. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I mean, you know, Dion Lord did give up stopping it a little bit, but uh, well played by Strider to, you know, to take it back. The the nice little block off to, to free his Saurus and, and get in. But, yeah, ultimately, like, the the field position just kept going against uh, Dion Lord, right? The stuns, the, the chaos, but he does have the chaos back. And, you know, if Dion Lord can get this one turn, he's suddenly in the driver's seat, or if there's a, a timeout, and, you know, in the second half, he can totally, you know, it's just a reset, isn't it? Okay, he's lost a skink. No big whoop. Um, he can maybe bash on the LOS, double LOS to punch. And, you know, he's still got his still got his app on the pocket. So, yeah, I think I think John Lord has probably, you know, thought about uh, over time pretty quickly there. Round the twist. Man, I, I love the... I love the... Uh, I love the... The theme song to Round the Twist, yeah. Oh, it was so good. So good. I mean, Dillon right did roll badly, but... So, sorry, uh, yeah, Dillon Lord rolled badly, but, uh, you know, Strider took advantage, you know? There's there's other people who wouldn't have taken advantage as well as Strider, so, you know, fair, fair play. Well, well, no doubt as well that, you know, both players know full well just how integral, how important it is qualifying via this game here this game here is, is such a difference maker because if you're guaranteed for next weekend there's none of the hullabaloo of going through the lower brackets or having to kind of go through that you, you are just guaranteed and, and 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 it's it's all set in stone for you from a timing perspective as well here jim i mean you've been in situations before i'm sure where you're kind of you know we talked about fatigue earlier on and you know um, overworking strategically and whatnot as well to, to spend the least amount of time having to prep and mentally break down opponents and know that you're already guaranteed going through, that's got to be a huge advantage too. Oh, yeah, for, for sure. You absolutely like, you know, yeah, say, you know, I said, I did say before about having, you know, knowing you've got the second chance, but yeah, you absolutely do not want to have to use that second chance. Yeah, 100%. If you if you can get through this, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, really, they will both desperately want to win and just be through to the to the the next weekend 100 percent yeah so that you know yep yep <laughs> all i can say is yep <laughs> yep 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 <laughs> it's yeah you know, the, the problem is like you know trying harder can't you know generate better results necessarily necessarily isn't it that's the only issue but but 
they, they will just definitely want it. They will they will want so badly to win this game for sure. You know, you want you want that second chance in your pocket as much as possible. You never want to have to use it for sure. Do you do you think Strider in this? Um, obviously, we're approaching the half waypoint as well here within the uh, turn also to go. Do you think that Strider's thinking about getting the second and putting this to bed, or do you think it's more about kind of like blocking whatever Dion Law comes back at him with? I, he's just got to react, I think. You know, like uh, he, he might. I think he's generally conservative. I think he will. He will generally just you know try and try and stay in front of Dion Lord and, uh, and you know screen and just stop. Get, you know, just try and stop the touchdown is, is going to be his, his primary thing. And there's, it's only if something crazy happens, uh, like that failed pickup from from Strider, you know, that then he might he might switch gears if he if he gets the chance. But his initial reaction will definitely be just to uh, to play off and play safe. I think. Quick snap. <gasps> he did not have a skink in position for it. That is that is maybe a bit of a mistake, honestly. Uh, it's it's something that people take time. It's great to get to move this guy. These two are amazing. So maybe he didn't think of it with that. But it's something the the Blood Bowl two players have to get used to, um, because now the rules have changed. It used to be you could move anybody with a quick snap, so you'd just move this skink instantly forward. Now you can't move if you're not marked. So maybe this skink should have started here, just on the chance of a quick snap to move him straight forward. So that that is an interesting, a very interesting little quirk. Um, of what could have happened with the uh, quick snap, for sure. Yeah, that's. Uh, it, it, it's still good. It's still good getting the quick snap here. It's still really good. Really good. It saves in the blitz and stuff. Um, so yeah, it's gonna help. It's gonna help a lot the quick snap. But I do wonder if he, if he should have started a, a skink on the line. Uh, Chameleon catches the skink. So that's a big, a big. Point of failure saved. Wow, finally, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Visionaries was a great series. I remember that. And uh, brilliant. Visionaries. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that? It was like a, you know, like a He-Man sort of thing. They had, they had like these weird holograms and stuff. Oh my! Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> I had loads of the figures, man. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh my! I and I shout out anyone that said I, I could see a lot of Brave Star. Oh my lord! Brave Star was the one. Did you have like the eye, the eyes of a hawk and the strength of a bear? <laughs> yeah. 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 With like these crazy tasselly cowboy boots. I'm gonna have. I want to look at his face right now. He was great. Yeah, stuff. that's a classic. Yeah, Speed of the Puma. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> everyone, everyone in chat, Speed of the Puma. Oh, the the knock. That's okay. That's okay. You can take this ball speed, down and then block speed, the <laughs> speed of the Puma. <laughs> oh. everyone, the best thing is everyone saying it. Yes. At the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Oh, you guys are the best. That's well funny. Speed of a Puma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he has to go for the push. I wonder if he could have blocked. Because he still had his blitz. I wonder if he could have like blitzed the. Uh, if he could have filled and blitzed with the, um, blitzed the Crocs or something. But he but just put in the rear roll. He's he's got two. Oh, he's got none now. Whoa. Wait. When when I thought he had two. When did he use the first one? What two rerolls? rolls? Yeah, he did. Oh, he just powered. He just rolled the power. He rolled the power in the initial blitz. Okay, so he had to reroll the power in the first block, and then he chose to reroll that one. I think he might have not had to have rerolled that one, um, but you know, maybe he did. <laughs> maybe he did. The re yeah, suddenly he's out of rerolls. With the rerolls aspect as well, I mean, with with lizard men being as strong as they are, is that why there you see less rerolls sometimes with lizard men, or is it simply this in this case, or because of the the way the team is structured, you don't necessarily need as many as other teams or, or races might do. Um, so it's it's like it's because their players are so good, they they cost they don't probably cost as much as they should do, <laughs> but uh, because their players cost so much they, they just can't get everything yeah and they, they've got to they've got to give up either you know they, they'd really love three rerolls like they would they would dearly love three rerolls and they dearly love want 12 players as well so 
Honestly, I, I don't hate going with three rerolls and only 11 players. And I think maybe that's what they would, would have done if there was no overtime. I think with overtime in mind, that's what's put them to 12 players. But uh, yeah, if, if they could have if they could afford 12 players and three rerolls, they totally would. Well, here we go. He's got, he's got, uh, he's in range. He's got dodge for the three dodgers and fails the first one. <laughs> so, you know, he got, he got the pushes. He did get the pushes through. Uh, decent one-turn attempt, but didn't get the dice. I mean, had to use two rerolls on the pushes. Well, I think as well, you know, Dion Lord, as you said, like, you know, turn five decided, okay, this isn't for me. I'm going to have a bit of a, a, a rethink here. And, and so I, I guess the halfway point is kind of like a, a reset, especially for, I think, Dion Lord to kind of go, right, this is how things are going to go. I'm going to go about this this time around. Um, but it'll be interesting to see exactly how things go in, in the opening kind of few turns we saw what happened in the last one with Andy and Art, and everything changed. Everything changed in the first turn or two, starting with the who you know the um, you know that kind of that that referee sending one of his. I mean, it was just it was just bonkers. But I think here, Dion Lord, unless the first few turns, Strider is that good a player though, isn't he? That he can really kind of like he can turn it on and change things up very quickly for his opposition. Yeah, he's got he's got a great record in tabletop as. Uh... Strider, but you know, Dion Lord's no, no slouch. He was top rated uh, or coach on tabletop, I remember. And, uh, yeah, but yeah, it, it's a total reset at the end of the day. Like, yeah, there's a dead skink, but so what? There's still 11 on, you know, 11 on the pitch for both sides. So it, basically, it's a new half, new game. Uh, Dion Lord just needs to basically forget about the first half. And, uh, you know, people do tilt a bit, you know, like maybe he's tilting a bit of the, the bad dice he's had. Um, it's possible, you know. I'm not not saying he is, but it's possible that people do tilt. So he's just got to just got to shake off the first half and and then yeah, look at it as basically a, a new game. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> basically, think of this as a new game where the bad dice might not happen, but they instantly happen. <laughs> 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 the bad dice instantly happen. Wow. Again. Beginning, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe it's a curse here on the broadcast. Every single game, <laughs> the first turn, that second half is a doozy. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is interesting because he could really put pressure on these two skinks if he knocks this guy over. Um, so he might do that, but then he might expose his own skinks. It's not easy. He might just uh, croc split, which is isn't a great choice. Interesting to see. I mean, it'll take a little while to think about it because this is one of those situations where you could get yourself in trouble a bit if you uh, if you do the wrong things. Just goes for a bit safe. Oh, cities of gold, yeah. <laughs> Theme tune. Oh. I, they, I, hey, chat, if there, there is something I, I've got a mission for you because I can't. There's, there's a show here, Jimmy. You might even know the answer to this. There was a show in the, around the same kind of era back in like the um, that kind of cartoon era back in like the uh, the 90s, and it was about a it was about a, a kid that was at high school, but he was at high school on a planet that had a pizza shop that he worked at. Do you remember this? <laughs> that it was so good. Bells. It was so good, and like the 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 lady who ran this pizza place had like thousand arms and she was like a crazy squid monster and it was like a high school and it was real fun it was like hey but everyone's like basically an alien and it was on like a, a weird moon and it was a pizza parlor i don't know if anyone remembered it. it was it was the greatest thing and i cannot remember what it is by god did it change my life <laughs> oh yeah. I, I mean i wish i could remember it <laughs> Oh, it? Have, it sounds wild. I mean, all these suggestions in chat as well. How we're going to kind of like fit, get out our studio next week? I mean, this is a this is a lot of gear we need to get for one for the, for next week. There's a lot of toys, plushes. There's a lot of stuff that we need. I don't know how we're going to do it, Jimmy. <laughs> it's it's asking a lot from you know if, if if this can all be provided for us, it will be well what what a, what a legendary weekend. <laughs> it's in my six thousand page rider. I have it every. every... <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> You know, you could you could call it the Night Rider. Oh, you could you could call it that. Um, okay, right. Let me. I want to try and find this this cartoon show myself. Actually, um, okay. The, the big power there means that he can try this one D at the end of the turn, probably. 
and then maybe try and crack the line with a crocs block. No, he's not. He's not going to do it. Oh, yeah, okay. Maybe he's not going to block the crocs. Maybe he's going to block diagonally. I feel like opening with a crocs block was okay there, but maybe he's a bit nervous after how the game has gone. Galaxy High. That actually rings a bell. Maybe, maybe I did see it. Galaxy. Oh, oh, yeah. that was it. Who said that? <laughs> Steve Motti. Steve Motti. I might get your name tattooed on my on my, on my arm somewhere. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious me! You absolute legend. Wow, that's incredible. That is absolute Galaxy High School. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the power of Grayskull. This has just changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, going? fantastic. Uh, apparently, there were only 13 episodes. It was that popular. <laughs> well, there you go. That's about um, the same as Faulty Towers, isn't it? You know, at, there least, you go. at least it was all good quality episodes, I'm sure. All good quality. Oh, that's incredible. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> love that love that that's fan that's amazing that's amazing oh what a great day i'm having a great time i'm having a really good time this is fun um <laughs> i mean lizard men versus lizard men the mirror the mirror show we're enjoying it but we're also enjoying everything about the last 30 years of its animated history <laughs> brilliant <laughs> Maybe he'll apple this. No, it's a badly hurt. He's not going to apple this. I thought if it was a KO, he might have appled it because. But you know, he, he, did, he did move that skink down there. Wow, he apples it for the overtime. That is a bold choice. Bold choice from Diet Dion Lord. He's not going to, you know, now he's at risk from any Saurus KO is going to be devastating. But, uh, you know, I, I guess the way of looking at it is if Dion Lord's going to win this game, it has to be in overtime. So, so by appling that guy. He gets, you know, guaranteed use out of it, use usage out of it, <laughs> in in the in like the only way that matters, right? Like he he has to win this in overtime. There's no way he wins this not in overtime. He's not going to score two touchdowns this half. So the only way he wins this is in overtime. So therefore, using an apple that is only relevant in overtime is a totally fine way of using your apple. But um, it does put the pressure on him to to get the you know the touchdown this half. He might blitz a skink here. He could run around the back. Oh, here we go, Saurus. Stun. Every little helps. Oh, he's definitely going to blitz this Saurus. And uh, it could be with the Crocs. Honestly, we're getting to the stage where I don't hate blitzing with the Crocs. So at least you've got a mighty blow hit on this guy. Just, you know, try and get lucky, I think. The Omlord's at the point where he's got to start trying to get lucky, I think. Just playing safe is maybe not going to cut it for him at this point. I don't think he can afford to now, can he, really? At, you know, turn 10, when there's a little time left. I, th I, think, you, I think you've got to go... You've got to be a bit more rash. I think so. I think so. This is... It's you know like it's it's not it's not terrible for him. He's he is only down, he is only down one player. Um, but these these guys these two are getting dominated by these three, and he has got this stun. So he, that you know that has got him a, a bit of value in the center. But I, I just feel like I, I would be I would be okay with rolling a few dice here to try and you know make make it a bit easier because. It's not, it's not easy, and you you can lose the toss in overtime. And if you lose the toss to Strider in overtime, you, you know you're really looking at being out. <laughs> so yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind seeing a bit more a bit more risk taking from Dion Ward here. But you know, I understand him not because you know Blood Bowl ultimately is uh, often massively punishes any single risk you take like like Andy's rush that he <laughs> that he failed so you know yeah it, it, it's tough it's tough to find that balance really tough 
really interesting hearing his that his own thoughts there. And I think you know one thing that he shared with us is that he didn't have you know obviously he's he's engaged in the game, so he didn't have kind of any comms open wasn't really kind of like he was just purely him and his own experience of what it was like to be in that situation so i think he was quite curious about how we digested it and how the audience at home as well what kind of like how thought of it and you know the, the way it played out um and i think you know understandably kind of you know he thinks could i have done things differently and you know we yeah i think he kind of agreed that those opening you know those opening kind of moments in the in the second half were were really tough to navigate weren't they Oh yeah, yeah. That was, that was. I mean, that that was brutal. That that lost him, that lost him the game. The uh, the uh, the send off and the GFI fail. Well, I, I believe that was in the uh, that was in the overtime, right? I think that was the overtime rather than the second half. Um, oh, you're right. You're right. Yes, it was. But uh, I, th I think the first half. You know, he said he was really happy with how he controlled the rat ogre, and you know, that's said that as well, right? Like it. I, I always like I always like listening, you know, to what people have to say. You know, like if you know, with the cups and that, a lot of us cast each other's games and stuff, and it's it's always interesting to to hear the point of view of it and stuff. And and uh, very rarely do you know does somebody come up with with something crazy that they've spotted or whatever. But mm -hmm. you know, even you know the basics that you get wrong, you're like, yeah, I, I know as soon as I did it that that was wrong, and I should have stood that guy up earlier and stuff. And but it's always interesting to hear because you know even if wow even if they're not the best player in the world like a second opinion is a second opinion isn't it so it's so yeah. it is always it's always interesting to hear what people say and 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 you know you can get good feedback from from anybody so yeah i always enjoy listening to that as well I, we might see the apple here from strider depends on how confident he is of stopping the score here not very apparently <laughs> <laughs> It's also not super relevant, right? Like it's just a skink. I think I think Strider wants better value. He's got a reserve, and you know he'd rather use it on a source. I mean, he'd rather not get a source removed. But if a source is removed, he'd rather have the apothecary for it. Oh. It, it, oh, hello. Oh. <laughs> I thought it was an AV break because the animation played, but uh, it's it's a little bit bugged at the moment, and it's not always an AV break. Yeah, um, well, it, I guess I guess it's, I was to say it's 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 quite u unique a situation where you've got two teams, two races going you know, head to head because there's the element of okay, how do I try and score and, and what do I need to do and kind of make sure I kind of uh, create the best pathway for my team as possible, but at the same time you know kind of almost the counter moves of your opponent because you have exactly the same uh things at your disposal so you're kind of constantly kind of almost second guessing yourself to a degree kind of thinking uh, you know i know what i would do that it's like playing it's like i guess like with anything playing about six or seven moves ahead thinking okay this is how things are going to unfold and the fact they both know each other um and how they might um go about kind of like you know managing um the next five rounds that must be another fact you've got to take into consideration yeah, I guess I guess that's an interesting uh, an interesting concept. Like you've, you, you're both trying to do the same things as well. Like you know, on your yeah. defense, you're trying to do the things that he's trying to do on his offense, and that uh, on his defense. And then on your offense, you're trying to do the same things that he's trying to do on his offense. So, so yeah, that <laughs> that is it is interesting how that works out. I mean, these two have been bullied off the side of the pitch, which is really bad for the Omlord. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I guess the the good thing is at least they're trading two for two, and it's taking the Croxagore away from Striders, like centre. So at least at least the Umlord's stronger in the centre, even though he's he's lost that flank. Um, the main thing, what you want to do is you you want like your your Saurus to be banging down there, Saurus, but they're not really okay. Here we come in, we come for the the cage dive. Does he put the reroll in? No. You, so you really want your your Saurus to be smashing their Saurus to bits. Which we saw happen in the first half, right? Dion Lord got two KO'd, multiple stuns for several turns. Um, and now, you know, like, Dion Lord's winning the fight, the Saurus fight. He's, he's going to get to make three hits here and a blitz. But the problem is he's losing the Skink fight because now, because I guess Strider was losing the Saurus fight, that's why he, he decided to go for the cage dive and make a Skink fight happen as well. Um, so you do want to hit, 
you know, this this is a perfect blitz here. Gets three dice with block and gets a chain out his uh, his ball carrier to safety. So it it was an okay move to put the to you know concept to do, but what you dream of is the in the lizard man map mirror really is three dicing skinks with block. <laughs> it's very rare that you get that chance. So interesting that Strider thought it was early enough to commit the skinks and go for this. Maybe he felt the dice slipping away. Yeah, and, th and this was the time he can surf that skink as well. Oh, I think he thought for a long time. I think he thought he was just going to free the the chameleon skink, and then I then he realized he could have surfed. And I think he should. problem is he couldn't get some. It would have been a one dice block, and it would have been really risky. But he he could have he could have uh, chained this guy forward, and then he could have two dice blocked, and then one dice blocked and surfed. That would have been really cool. But I guess he's. He's uh, he's playing safer, which is understandable. You know, you it's a, it's a it's a funny old game. I think playing the I think playing the game, people are a lot more conservative than watching the game. And you know, as a kind of an analyst kind of idea, you know, like commentator, you kind of think of like the braver plays when you're not playing, that maybe are correct. But then when, when you're actually playing, it's a lot easier to say, like, let let me not lose the game this turn, right? <laughs> I'd, li yeah. I'd like zero chance of losing the game this turn, please. Well, it's, um, it's the consequence factor, isn't it? You know, you kind of like, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a really great idea. But in, in reality, it's like being in that moment, knowing, you know, what the inevitable will be if it doesn't play out in, the, in your favor. Um, mm. And in this instance, obviously, it's qualifying for the grand finals of our competition. So I guess that <laughs> definitely makes a difference. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Great uphill here. This rescues this guy off the off the edge. The problem is it frees up the crocs as well, so he's going to have to just re-tag the crocs. I think he'll cheerify uh, or rush to stand here, which is kind of a terrible thing to do. But on the other hand, at least it means you know he's not getting surfed by the crocs, and he's the crocs isn't fighting going back in the center to fight because this is actually great. His crocs are going three down, so I just tagged from there. So that was that, again. That was safer, right? There's the pair after the GFI. The pro I guess the problem is like the two reroll build. They really have to play safe and they have to not make these GFIs. Um, and also with overtime. So yeah, oh, yeah, completely understandable to not to not do the GFI for the slightly better tag. And it's only slightly better. So you know we, you know, if we, <laughs> I don't know if he saw the the previous game. If he did, uh, <laughs> that's definitely going to be in his mind, isn't it? With the uh, with Andy's Andy's rush, <laughs> it just shows you how dangerous it is. You you know you're thinking I'm a nine player, two plus. Mm -hmm. It's totally fine to do, but you know, maybe cost Andy the game that the guy that, the guy getting uh, getting killed from that GFI. <laughs> Rush. I must remember they're called rushes now. I think that's one of the one of the hardest things <laughs> to, that have changed in the rules is is changing GFIs to rushes. They've been GFIs since 1988. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of all the things that I mean, that, all that time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. 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 Okay. That is. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing we talked about earlier on about kind of you know the meta of the game changing and like that. Yeah. You know, with jump with um you know jumps and leaps and whatnot, but. <laughs> The, the verbiage around things that that's a whole different thing <laughs> yeah yeah 1988 was second edition blood bowl and it was it was a lot different to you know this blood bowl and then third edition was 94 so so like really those six years it aren't aren't really comparable to anything that came after it so but uh, i did start playing in 1990 <laughs> with the old version oh wow huge cars huge cars that is massive. And uh, the Omlord's apple is gone on Matt Skink. Hey, uh, hey, Jimmy. Let me ask yep. you a question. Let me ask you a question. What was the biggest movie of 1990? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Dances with Wolves. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one, but it wasn't that. But we know it officially. We, we, we know it was confirmed. As a, as a 1990 movie, it wasn't that. Jack, go wild with this one. But yeah, Never it wasn't lucky. that. No, don't Never look. lucky. You got me. You got me by I, saying it was 90 earlier. I know, Wolf's I know. Skull. He's, he's got to re-roll this, I think. Yeah, he does. Gets the push. Gets him off the pitch. And so now two more removals for Dion Lord. This is... Uh, he's, in a, he's in a bit of a pickle. Uh, I, I 
thought I'd nailed it. Oh, and a stun. I thought I'd nailed it there. <laughs> you got me. You got me. <laughs> no, telling me it was 99. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so, mate, I, I did kind of, I, I did kind of bait, bait you in a little bit there. <laughs> um, I don't think even dances. Oh no, dances with wolves was number 13. So you weren't too far off, mate. Oh, wow. you weren't too far off. Wow. You weren't too far off at all. Um, oh shit, yeah, yeah. some. Uh, that's some big dude it feels like every single year like in, in before let's say 2010 ev like there was a gazillion unbelievable movies like it just feels yeah. like, like that way yeah and then it all changed well i think it all changed. i've got i've got i've got a theory on this funnily all enough. right <laughs> come on mr fantastic <laughs> oh he fails the one in nine dodge and it's almost all over will flip me he actually had a chance to get a to get a good little progression here he could have blocked off one of these run through here he would have a nice little screen he would have stalled it for another turn and then i think strider would have had a two turn chance but now he can just pick it up and, and make it safe really strong here my theory is 2003-ish, when Shrek came out and the Harry Potter movies came out, mm -hmm. was when the film studios realized they could just sell children's movies to adults. <laughs> it's a good and, shout. Good shout. Yeah, and I think I think that was the thing. Because back in our day, you had you had toys that were sold like Robocop toys, right? And they were alien toys. <laughs> they made they made toys <laughs> of like kid children's toys of, of adult movies. Yeah, and 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 then now they make they make toys for adults, don't they? With these Funko Pops, you know, and they, they 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 make they make the Marvel movies for adults. So like they they they've managed to make they've they've gone from <laughs> they've gone from adult movies for kids to kids movies for adults. <laughs> that that's a, that's a unique take. I like that. That's, that's very unique. That, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks. You're right. Yeah, but yeah, toys when I was growing up were like. I had like a T-100 for Christmas. I was like, whoa, well, thanks, Santa. <laughs> Hooking me up with a Terminator for Christmas. I, I love this. Yeah, that was completely normal for a child. <laughs> I, was, I was like, what did you have for Christmas, Predator? What about you? Oh, I got Pinhead from Hellraiser. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he failed the pickup. Does he put in the last reroll? He does, and it fails. Strider out of rerolls. But the the other skin catches the, catches the scatter. Huge. Do you think? Do you think Dion Lord, with the initial kind of like um, you know willingness to well, that, give up the first half, would that would that if this doesn't work out that he can get back into this, or there is even you know uh, a way of making the overtime as it looks like it more increasingly more unlikely, would that be a regret at all of playing it that way, or do you think that was the way that uh, inevitably because the way that Strider positioned himself, that was probably going to happen anyway? Yeah, I think it was the right call. I think I think it's it's one that you'll look back on inevitably, and and you know say was it correct? I think it was correct. I mean, you, you know, you can't use results based thinking ultimately. You know, you, I, yeah, he might look back and you know reassess and and decide that he was incorrect. Mm -hmm. But I I think you know you shouldn't beat yourself up about these decisions. At the end of the day, you're in you know you're in the situation. You make a judgment call. And then, and then you know, you live with that with your assessment. And I think, I think it was a fine assessment. Like, I, I don't think it was. Uh, I mean, even if it was incorrect, it wasn't like you know a, a ludicrous, a, you know, a ludicrous uh, conclusion to to come to. You know what I mean? Like, I think yeah. it, it was it was really looking bad and a completely fine thing to do. Man, that was that was a, a bad turn. Used he so Dion Lord used both of his rerolls, and his Crocs went stupid. So. Wow, this is pretty pretty swingy, and uh, there might be there might be a really good chance um, for Strider if he can activate his Crocs, lock this guy free, and that stupid Crocs. Uh, well, not really stupid, is it? With the boneheaded Crocs, he can he can chain free and stuff, and uh, yeah, I think this could be a really strong turn. This this could, this could seal the deal here for Strider. I think he wants to be as safe as possible. He only wants to block with block. There's a there's a consideration for just trying to move the Crocs to go in here and just solidify. Not terrible because he is one nil up, so he, he doesn't have to think. You know, he doesn't have to count the score. But yeah, he goes in for the assist for this block, which I think is probably correct. Oh, there's the power. 
I think John Lord might be fuming. Yeah, he's 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 had. He's not had the best dice, has he? I, you know, I think Striders play well and taken advantage, but some people might call this a comedy mega dicing. <laughs> it more more <laughs> one of the more subtle ones, you know. Like there's only two cars here, and, and one of those came late. Um, there's a KO on the other side. Stride, you know, Strider still got his apple to be fair, but yeah, a bit a bit subtle. Not not the. Uh, yeah, uh, certainly, it's very subtle. Yeah. <laughs> When he gets the push. The chain's not that weird. He, he pushes him out and then he gets the 2D. The, like, so he gets to make a blockless block rather than a dodge with dodge. And he gets to push this guy out so that he doesn't have to make a dodge at all. So, this is really nice. Really nice. Oh, but there is the one in nine. So... There's another chance, and a KO, there's another chance for the Omlord. Not a good chance. <laughs> I think he might have to roll a 5 plus dodge. Oh, the Crocs! 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, okay, okay, the Crocs, the Crocs can hit. So he, he one dice blocks here, needs like a 3 or more here to push this Saurus out of the way, and then the crocs can run around and hit the, the skink. That's pretty amazing. Okay. I don't think this is urgent enough <laughs> from Dion Lord. He's, he's losing 1 mil, and he has 1 skink. So. Yeah. He, he basically has to get the ball down and in hand this turn. It's not easy. No. I'm just looking at the um the results being uh being shared with us here. I hear in the lower bracket uh first round. Looks like we have Galentio a two zero against Kiander as well. Wow. But if my math is not mistaken, that that knocks Kiander out of the competition. It does, yeah. Imperial Nobility eliminated oh, that's outrageous. Well, is, is that the first the first round I believe like so. the first result in our well? Yeah, yeah, first one in. Yeah, so um, in the oh, so interestingly, so Plotinus. Uh, oh no, no, sorry. Forgive me. I think we've got here. Yeah, Kiander or oh no, okay. So the two point one minute. Okay, so I think the loser of Hiru versus Inarion will play Galentio in the next round. Right. If my understanding of brackets is on point. Let's hope so. <laughs> Let's hope so. I could be just it's, be saying things. It's not easy, is it? Honestly, like it's uh, it's it, it takes a it takes a bit of a, a bit of a big brain to work out all of these permutations and stuff. It's uh, you know, it's like it's all it's all perfectly clear on the thing, but it's it's also it's also a bit of a struggle, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm going to give you the answer, by the way, to my to my conundrum, which was what is the what was the highest grossing movie of 1990? Do you want to know the answer? Yes, please. Okay, so internationally, apparently, it was Home Alone. Okay? Oh, so shout yeah. out to all those Home Alone in the chat. Home Alone was a big one that year. Oh, man, I could have got that. I could have got that, you know. Like, I feel like at Christmas, I read an article and saying it was the highest grossing film internationally of 1990. I feel like I could have had that if I was a bit sharper. Mate, honestly, some of the movies, these are not, but there was another movie that was number one, though, apparently. Um, but there were, I mean, that year you had things like Die Hard 2, Total Recall, Arachnophobia, Kindergarten Cop. Man, there were some absolute beauties. Uh, but the, the top movie, it looks like here, was Ghost, starring Patrick Swayze. Uh, uh, classic. Classic. What a movie. Absolute classic. Love a bit of Swayze. Prefer dirty dancing, I'll be honest. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty great. That is pretty great. What a film. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Bang. the last turn of this match, it looks like, well, it is a, a, a certain, a done deal here. 
Yeah, it looks, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, th there was the vaguest chance. So what he would have had to have done, <laughs> he would have had to knock the ball down. He would have had to like pick up the Croxigo. No, the Croxigo can't pass. Wait, can Saurus pass? Maybe there was no chance. Oh, I can't see the stats of. I don't know if Saurus <laughs> can pass anymore. They they used to they used to pass on a five plus, and now now the Crocs goal can't pass. I don't know if if Saurus can even pass. That's uh, not something you know you would generally think about playing good ball. But <laughs> if the Saurus can pass, okay. So you'd have had to have picked it up with one Saurus and passed to a different Saurus. <laughs> <laughs> Which is uh, technically possible, but I wouldn't bet anything on it. <laughs> no, that sound that sounds adventurous, adventurous <laughs> at best there. But um, a GGs to our players there, and uh, congratulations to Strider confirming a place next weekend in Grand Finals. I mean, Jimmy, enormous. I mean, Strider, we know uh, history and competition, particularly tabletop, we talked about. But what a, what a, what a big moment to be there next weekend, knowing guaranteed you will be competing for that top prize uh, in this season finals. Yeah, it's got to be an amazing feeling, hasn't it? Uh, Strider, yeah, totally well known, totally used to like you know making the top four of tabletop events, and and pretty much every tournament he enters. To be honest, <laughs> you know he's a perennial, perennial tournament winner, won loads of tournaments, top top player, and uh, so yeah, not surprised at all to see him in there. The, I think it's just the way the matchups went that I, I my prediction was him you know losing at some point, but uh, I, I definitely I put him in the final. I, I put I, I predicted him in the final, so yeah, not a surprise at all to see him first the first person to book his ticket okay i like that a, 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 already a, a big call i love that jimmy i love these predictions of yours a big one early <laughs> on we're going to see strider in the final okay it might happen uh but i mean is there anything he, i mean i mean he, he, could have, dion law could have done better there or differently to to have had more of a an opportunity to at least to, to touch down to take things to overtime do you think at all or do you think strider was that in control in a driving seat that it was near on impossible to change things I think it's near on impossible. I, I, I do, there's nothing that I looked at that I thought, ooh, you know, that was a mistake. I, I think the the problem was just the way the dice fell. A, a lot of it, you know, and, and obviously Strider, you know, having a live opponent, you know, Strider was making the right decisions, and there was just nothing easy that that Dion Lord fluffed. You know, there was he pretty much just did everything he could. The only thing I guess on the last, the the very end there, the, the turn fifteen. I think he had to go for a Crocs goal blitz, and like you know, that's a very, it's a very harsh thing to say that what he did was wrong. But I do think that he he did made made a mistake at the end. But you know, totally understandable in the situation that it, it was so, it, again really unlikely to work. But I think he could have done that. But it, it was mostly just having to roll the dice and you know pray was was his best chance through a lot of the match. <laughs> well, well, I mean, the good thing is as well there is that I mean, still in the competition, regardless of you know, of, you know, that's the great thing about the winners bracket is that you still you retain you remain uh in the lower bracket whatever whatever happens here um so despite strider going through to the next round um we will see dion lord again uh but a, a huge uh, match later on there i think dion lord will be going up against by the looks of things either crystal hunter or smiles though one of those two competitors there mm -hmm. um do i ask predictions now of that particular match what, what would what would suit dion lord better um which of those competitors do you think would give um dion lord the best opportunity to go through to next week it's yeah, that's a that's a tough one. I think it's pretty fifty-fifty between Lizardmen and Skaven. Um, you can't really protect the Skinks from the good runners, um, but your Lizardmen completely dominate the Line Rats. So I, I'd say probably Lizards are favoured in that match. So I'd imagine Smilzo would win, and if he doesn't win, then you know, then the, then maybe Strider. Uh, no, sorry, Dion Lord would. Yeah. So I, I think I think. Dion Lord, you know, it's either a mirror or or a race he's probably favoured again. So I think probably Dion Lord's pretty pretty happy, you know, not not too despondent to have lost that game. I think he'll fancy his chances in the in the losers bracket. All right, all right. Well, let's actually have a look at the brackets now. As I only bring it up here, Jimmy. Uh, let's take a look at the winners bracket first and foremost, uh, and see how that currently stands. As you can see here, uh, we've had our first round has been and gone. We're already into our round number two here. The first of those matchups being Strider versus Dion Law, where a two-zero victory for Strider propels him through to next weekend, uh, where Strider will be in our top six, uh, playing to be the champion in our season finals grand final here. But more, I mean, more matchups there. We've got three more um, of our, 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 our round two winners bracket matches there. Uh, Artemis versus Caltroop. Uh, we've got Hiru versus Anarion and Diomed versus Moomin as well. So still big games in this particular round at this point in the competition, Jimmy. 
Huge games, yeah. Um, all very interesting, right? Um, heroes with dwarves versus Anarion with black orcs. And I was very scared of facing Anarion. As I was, I was rubbishing the, his choice of black orcs a lot because you know they could have been lizard men. <laughs> uh, but I was still pretty scared of the matchup. So I think that's not going to be easy for Hero at all. And I, I'd maybe pick Anarion, but you know both top coaches. And uh, Diomed has already has already beaten Eliod, right? So. It's tough to bet against him against Moomin yeah. Slayer, uh, but then, you know, Moomin Slayer beat Cruz and, and Elliot was terrified of facing Crucifer. So. <laughs> and, and lo and behold, it'll happen. You can see it here in the loser bracket. It's going to happen um, very, very soon, actually. Uh, hopefully here on the uh, on the official broadcast. Um, and but by the way, every 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 single player streamer you see on screen here, um, make sure to follow them online. This is a huge celebration of Blood Bowl three. Uh, all the all the players who take part in this competition. Uh, go and follow Jimmy Fantastic for Pete's sake as well, obviously, uh, as well as Andy and the rest of the gang. Because the great thing is here, it's all about uh, uh, sharing the love and uh, and uh, being part of this this amazing community. Um, we saw the lower bracket there as well here. Andy, I think, right in the middle, knee deep in the middle of his lower bracket uh, matchup to try and stay in this competition too here. Yeah, yeah. Um, How, do we know he's getting on, Jimmy? Do you have any inkling as to as the current score? I, I've got no idea. I could I could try and have a look, but uh, I I do think he'll I do think he'll be pretty happy about the matchup. You know, I, yeah. I had no idea how he's doing, but before the match, I'll have think he'll have been pretty happy about it all and. Uh, yeah, but it's uh, any anybody's guess what's happening. So, <laughs> okay, okay, well, it's a surprise. It's a surprise for all of us here. Yeah. Uh, on that note, though, what we'll do is we'll definitely check in with Andy again later on. He'll be back joining us here on the broadcasting. For now, that we'll do is is we'll do a little break here, give you guys a chance to stretch your legs and come back and see us because on the hour we have ourselves our third match of the day. You do not want to miss it because we mentioned it and it is going to be a beauty. Make sure you get back here for it. Uh, we'll see you back here very shortly. Follow the counter on screen to exactly when we're due back uh, talking to you guys in a short while. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you back here for loads more of the Blood Bowl 3 season finals in just a bit.